Hello there. Uh, welcome back to my channel. By this video, we want to look uh, at a question from the question paper of November 2024. So uh, we are going to look uh, at a question on company and close a cooperation concepts. So we are going to look at question two on that question paper. So the question reads: uh, Give one term for each of the following descriptions uh, by writing it next after the question number that is put 2.1 to 2.7. So uh, the first part, 2.1, is uh, it is an incorporeal movable thing that is transferable in the way described by the Close Cooperation Act. So uh, basically, um, we know that uh, when we are talking about incorporeal, uh, we are talking about something uh, that does not have a physical existence. So it's that the correct answer that we have uh, concerning 2.1 is members' interest. Uh, so remember, the, term, uh, the, question, uh, the question is instructing to give one term for each of the following descriptions. So we are saying for 2.1 is a member's interest and member's interest uh, refers uh, to the percentage ownership that each member has in the company. So uh, basically that's what we have. So here in the other section, uh, we are going to have uh, members, uh, members' interest. So basically this is what we have uh, in terms of acquiring the use of an asset through a rental agreement. And we know that this is the leasing uh, this is a leasing. It uh, basically a lease uh, is it's a contractual uh, a contractual arrangement uh, calling for the user uh, to pay the owner of the uh, for the use of an asset. So when we have uh, the user uh, getting into an agreement uh, to pay the owner for uh, the owner of an asset uh, for the use uh, for the use of that asset, uh, we call it a lease. So basically, the process is called leasing. So. Uh, also, uh, we can also try to see that uh, when we are talking about the list again, uh, on its own, uh, it's a legal document outlining the terms under which one party agrees to rent uh, property from another party. So that's what we have. So we have got listed on 2.2. Tax payable by companies are based on the taxable profits of, uh, of the period. So uh, this is our cooperation tax. So our cooperation tax um, uh, is tax on the profits of a cooperation and that generate revenue usually. Uh, this is through the uh, revenue collection procedures done by the government. So uh, basically it's based on the profits that has been made uh, by the cooperation as a business. So basically that's uh, what we have. So we are saying, um, is a cooperation a tax 2.3 then we'll go to our 2.4 the vendor will be liable to pay out the tax on actual cash received and will only be allowed to deduct input tax uh, on cash purchases applicable to a tax period so uh, we also try to see which uh, is the most appropriate and this is uh, the payment uh, the payment basis so 2.4 we have a payment a basis so i'm uh, moving on uh, to the next part of our question which is not going to be our 2.5, we use this to check the company's cash inflow for decision making. So, uh, as soon uh, as more than that, it becomes uh, for decision making. Uh, we know that this is a net cash inflow divided by its total debts. Net, uh, net cash inflow divided by its uh, cash flow debts. And uh, this is basically cash flow to debt ratio. So, basically, it is the ratio uh, of the company's cash flow from operations uh, uh, to its uh, total debt. So basically, that's what we have. So we are saying uh, the net cash inflow divided by its uh, total uh, debts, which is Uh, this is what we have. Moving on uh, to our next question, which is now 
2.6 uh, a business means uh, that the value of the business as a coin concern is greater than the value of its separate tangible assets. So uh, the value of the business uh, compared uh, to the uh, value of separate tangible assets. So uh, the value of separate tangible assets, we are saying, uh, we make the valuation uh, based on a specific tangible asset, then we combine the total value. And then we compare to the value that is perceived uh, to the business. So uh, basically, uh, that's at the comparison that is there. When uh, the value of the business that is perceived is greater now uh, than uh, the value of uh, separate tangible assets, that's when we have a uh, good win. So uh, basically, uh, the appropriate uh, answer that we have 2.6 for the correct answer is a uh, good win. And we know that uh, goodwill, uh, it is an intangible asset. Uh, and uh, it's recognized when the firm is purchased as a going concern. So basically, that becomes applicable to our explanation. So it reflects the premium that the buyer pays in, the, in addition to the net value of uh, its other assets. So any value that is above uh, the value of um, uh, the net value of, of, of the assets of the business. Uh, it becomes a goodwill. So uh, basically, we have goodwill. So we move on to 2.7. What the dividend provision is calculated on? Uh, we know that uh, when you are calculating dividends, uh, they come in the form of cents. Uh, they can be, for example, 60 cents per share. Dividends were paid 30 cents per share, for example. So um, the number of issued uh, shares, the number of issued shares uh, is the correct response. Because, uh, remember, we say the provision that is given in terms of the, in terms of number of cents, we multiply it uh, by the uh, number of shares that is has already been issued up to that date. So basically, uh, that uh, becomes uh, the dividend. So basically, we are saying uh, issued share capital. Is the response of 2.7. So uh, basically, this is what we have uh, for the question two of the question paper of November uh, 2024. Uh, and we are saying this question is for the carbon and close a cooperation concepts. So uh, that's what we have. And uh, Thank you for listening and hopefully the video was helpful. And please, uh, let's take note, uh, more uh, typical uh, examination questions will be uploaded on this channel. So let's stay tuned. Uh, let's meet again in the next video.